vertical jump testing machine. Uh, so it's going to be a lot cheaper. It cost me about $75 in total. So I'm going to show you through some of the basic steps, starting with measuring out the base. So you need to have four two and a half foot pieces. So what I'm going to do here in a second is I'm going to measure, make marks, and then cut the PVC pipe with a general hacksaw. Okay, to do this project, you're going to need one two foot threaded rod. You're going to need some PVC pipe that's thin that you can make spacers. You need an assortment of elbows and then T-joints. You need a couple of two foot PVC pipes. I used one and a half inch. And then you need, I have five five foot poles of PVC pipe. You can get 10 foot and have them cut at Home Depot. I went to Menards, they're already pre-cut. Uh, you're going to need a drill, measuring tape, a hacksaw. You'll need the, I use the composite shims. You need composite shims or you could use wood shims to make the pieces that you're going to hit with your hand to measure the jump. Then of course you need hex nuts and some caps to uh, create the spacing of one inch onto the vertex portion. You need to make the cut right about here, which would be half of this, making it two and a half feet each. Okay. All right. Move that over here. Okay. You feeling it? Yeah. I took the two two and a half pieces, connected them with a T connector, and so this is going to form the base. Now what I'll need to do is put two 90 degree elbows and the other two two and a half feet pieces of pipe, and that will form the base. Yeah, I am. Okay. All right, so this is from the base right there. Make some adjustments. Okay. Next, we'll take one five-foot piece, and we're going to put that into the base right here, pressing it down. Okay. We'll take one more T connector. We'll put it on here. And what will happen now is I can make different lengths. I'm going to make a three foot pipe and also a two foot pipe so that I can adjust the height to the final vertex. I'm going to make the, the most difficult part is making the actual jumping device, which I've already started here. Um, so what's going to end up happening is at the top, you're going to have it like this so that the jumper can then hit this forward to see how high they actually can touch. Um, so I've got the first one on here and then I'm gonna to continue to make the rest of those. So to make this part, what you need to use is a shim, and you have to drill a hole through it, and then you have to hold it together by two hex nuts. So I'm gonna show you how I drilled these composite shims. Here's a completed one. So what did I, what I did is I used the drill, which is the same size as the rod, which is 5 16 and I drilled through it to make the hole there that the rod would fit, fit around. So the way that I measured it is, as you can see, I started to drill after the second rivet. That's where I put the drill. So I basically put the drill in the center of the third rivet. Okay, go ahead and record this. It's a little bit hard to get it started, but once you get it going, it's good. Okay. 
There you have it. So that's what you got to do for each one. Next, what I'm making are spacers so that the piece between each of the shims will be exactly one inch. So I'm going to make lines of where I'm going to cut. I'm going to put lines every half inch and then I'm going to use a PVC cutter to cut these spacers. Okay, so this is a standard PVC uh, cutter. All you need to do is just make sure that you're on the line and then this makes it pretty simple. Just go ahead and snap it right off. Very simple process. Wow. Go ahead, keep recording, honey. Right here. Okay. Okay. So I've got the threaded rod. I've got the first one on here. I put a hex nut on the bottom and a hex nut on the top. Uh, but I want these to be one inch apart. So what I made are, this is a quarter of an inch and this shim is a quarter of an inch. So I made a half inch spacer out of PVC to go there. Then I take the next one, put it on top, and that gives me one inch. Once it's there, it's one inch apart. Now to give it more of a straight look, I'm going to snap on another hex nut over the top there. This is a little bit tedious, um, as you have to actually have to start at the top and you have to actually uh, twist this all the way down to its location. This piece right here was, the, was by far the toughest piece to make, uh, but I think it's also the most important part. This is actually where the athlete's going to jump and touch the pieces of the shim to mark how, how high they can actually uh, touch. So. Basically what I had to do is I had to put that two foot rod into two smaller pieces of PVC pipe. I needed a T-joint right here and then an elbow at the top. Um, so what I did is I used a couple of lock nuts at the top. You can see that one right there. And then on the inside, I put a little nut and bolt in there uh, to hold it in by drilling holes too through the PVC. All right, so one of the last things I need to do, I've got a five foot piece right here. I need to uh, cut it into two parts. I'm gonna have a three foot part and a two foot part. And that way, when I have different athletes with different jumping levels, I will be able to switch those out so that it won't be either too short or, or actually too high for them. So I'm about to cut that and then I'll be ready to put it all together. Ended up being the final product. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see as it gets to the top because of the garage, uh, but that's basically how it ended up right there.